All right, Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus. Should you get one? Let's talk about that. So on the left here, we have the uh, original Raspberry Pi 3 Model B, and on the right, we have a Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus. So let's talk about some of the new features on the Raspberry Pi 3 Plus. You can just see them by just checking out the board itself in comparison to the old one. So you can see right here, you've got your new fancy monogrammed dual band Wi-Fi with the uh, Raspberry Pi logo on there. And so it's got five gigahertz band this time now, which will hopefully improve your speed and stability. And it also got it has gigabit, gigabit ethernet. So the problem with this is it still routes through the USB interface. So it's throttled somewhat. And maybe if we get USB 3.0 on the next board for the Raspberry Pi 4, hopefully, that might improve your Wi-Fi speed. Also, it's got a Bluetooth upgrade from 4.1 to 4.2, so hopefully that will improve stability for some of these Bluetooth controllers, maybe reduce input lag a bit. Um, and then we have, you can see right here, these four little chips, these four pins, it's for power over ethernet. So if you're doing an internet of things type thing or some networking, uh, if you need to power it over the ethernet, that's a useful feature. I don't know how useful for RetroPi that'll be, but it's, it's there. And then the CPU, it's the same, but it's uh, it's clocked a bit high at 1400 megahertz. So I don't know how much more that's really going to help emulation as a lot of the emulation issues now are kind of a GPU bottleneck rather than a CPU. On top of that, there's no RAM upgrade. So I don't think that you will get the upgraded speed you're hoping for for emulation, which makes sense because the Raspberry Pi is really meant for education. It's not really designed to be a high-end gaming type device, but still works for Richard Pi for now, so I'm happy. And then also it runs a bit cooler, uh, but so some of the cons that might come with it is that because it's got a higher clock CPU, it's going to have a higher power draw naturally. And then as far as Richard Pi is concerned, it means you're probably going to have to start with fresh image because it will only work on Raspbian Stretch, which we're looking at releasing a new image hopefully soon, but uh, that may cause some problems if you are happy with your build that you have because it's not a very clean build update from Jesse to Stretch. Really, it's going to probably require flashing of the new image and then transferring things over, which is why I personally prefer to keep all my ROMs and scrapes on my USB drive. So it makes for transferring a lot quicker. And then, so should you upgrade? Uh, if you have the money and if you're addicted to Raspberry Pis like I am, I don't see why not. But if you're hoping for some life-changing emulation improvements, I think you're going to be a tad disappointed and you're probably fine keeping your 3B. Uh, either way, Raspberry Pi is a fantastic product. It's a fantastic learning tool and I am very happy they are continuing to develop uh, not only the hardware, but especially the software side of things, because I think the software and the community are far more valuable than a bit more RAM and maybe a better GPU, because all of the stuff that we do with RetroPie and with the Raspberry Pi community would not be possible without all of the help from the great people at the foundation and all of the DIY tinkerers and smart people, preferably smarter people than me. Uh, and it's actually quite fantastic. So uh, I would recommend getting it if you want to, if you have the money, but it's not a big deal if you don't want to. You're probably fine with where you're at. So uh, yeah, uh, maybe I'm gonna do some uh, comparisons with Wi-Fi transfers to see how they actually compare with the new build. And maybe I'll do that in a different video. But until then, hopefully you get to enjoy your new Raspberry Pi.